Oh dear, Georgia Tech. I said going into this game, if you are actually an ACC title contender, regardless of how good Florida State actually is compared to what we thought they were, Georgia Tech would go into Syracuse and win this game. Nope. That's got to be disappointing. That is disappointing for Brent Key and company. You had a 2-0 start. You had the top 25 ranking already, so you were starting to gain the respect of the college football world writ large, and then that happens. 31-28, the final. How about Syracuse? How about Kyle McCord? Over 280 yards passing in the first half? Ended the game with 368. I mean, McCord was utterly fantastic. Where was this guy at Ohio State last year? I mean, he he was there, of course. He just wasn't putting up numbers like this all the time. So what a win for Syracuse. I, I mean, a statement for Fran Brown in year one. And let me um let me just let me just read you something, just just in case you're you're not aware. Syracuse is now one and zero in ACC play. They are two and zero on the year. Let me read you their schedule real quick, just just so you keep this on the radar. They host Stanford and Holy Cross in the next couple of weeks. Should be a couple wins. They go at UNLV. Don't sleep on that game, but that's not a that's not a conference game. At NC State, at Pitt, host Virginia Tech, at Boston College, at Cal, host UConn, host Miami. It's one of the most favorable schedules in the entire ACC. If you were looking at Georgia Tech after their win against Florida State and thinking, hey, they could make a run. They could push to be an upper tier team in the ACC. You better watch out for Syracuse. Now they have to avoid what was, of course, their Achilles heel in the Dino Babers era, which was start strong, win a bunch of games, and crater off in the second half of the year. But it's a new era. Fran Brown's in charge. That's a huge win. That's a huge, huge win for the Orange. Kyle McCord looked really good. They had a 31-14 lead. Georgia Tech recovers an onside kick and gets it to within three in the fourth quarter, which is when that 17-point lead that I mentioned was actually held by the Orange, and they're able to hold on and win the game 31-28. to Really disappointing here for Georgia Tech. 31 points to Syracuse. The pass defense, it just wasn't there. It just wasn't there. So, when you peruse the box score in uh, this particular game, Haynes King had to throw the ball 39 times. 39 times. They ran, wait for it. Remember I talked going into this game about how many yards Ohio went for on the ground? Close to 300 last week against the Syracuse defense. Georgia Tech went for 112. Now they average almost five yards a carry. So it's not like they were incapable of running the ball. Jamal Haynes, 11 carries for 35 yards, not what the Yellow Jackets were looking for. But here's where the difference came in. Syracuse got out to an early lead. And I tweeted out during the game that Georgia Tech's passing attack is going to be tested in a way or required to be active in a way that it just hadn't in the last couple of weeks. They were able to run the ball. They got a lead or they were playing a competitive game and they just kept running the football. And Syracuse put them down 17 points. Well, you can only have 24 pass attempts to th- or 24 rush attempts to 39 pass attempts in the game. Cal McCord, holy smokes, 32 of 46 for 381, four touchdowns and no interceptions. Really impressive day. Syracuse was solid on the ground, just over four yards of carry, but Cal McCord led the way. Aronda Gats in the second uh, with a couple of touchdowns. Tribor Pena with a couple of touchdowns as well. Syracuse impresses. That, that's that's an impressive win. I don't want to take away from Syracuse and say Georgia Tech were frauds. Georgia Tech can't do this. Georgia Tech wasn't actually capable of, of doing that. I asked the question about Georgia Tech going forward, whether they could push to be an upper tier ACC team. They still could. But if you're a true title contender, this was a game you find a way to win. And they just didn't. So a really, really disappointing effort for the Yellow Jackets here. But equally as huge for the orange i mean that is a statement win and you just you're just gonna watch at the end of the year you're gonna look up and go wait syracuse has won how many games wait syracuse is ranked syracuse is doing what now yeah that's right the syracuse orange oh what a game it was in stillwater 39 31 oklahoma state squeaks it out they almost covered they almost covered this line was around 10 points or so arkansas should have won the football game here is a tragic stat to hear Arkansas outgained Oklahoma State 648 to 30, 385. They lost the football game. Now, that's bad news for Arkansas. Is there one and one? Oklahoma State's two and out. The Big 12 had both uh, Kansas, or Kansas State and Oklahoma State, top 20 teams losing 
to teams they shouldn't have been losing to. But they both found a way to win, and they saved the conference's bacon for the moment. The same cannot be said for Cincinnati, who blew a massive lead against Pitt. Here's the good news for Arkansas. That offensive firepower that was on display last week against Arkansas Pine Bluff doesn't appear to be a flash in the pan. You you just got to clean up the mistakes. Arkansas, excuse me, Arkansas turned the ball over. Arkansas fumbled a punt. Arkansas Arkansas had a 14-0 lead and the football in this game. They they possessed the ball with a 14-0 lead and they lost. That's that's tough in double overtime. So Arkansas kicked a field goal in overtime. They missed. Oklahoma State kicks a field goal in double overtime. They missed. Then Oklahoma State scores a touchdown. Arkansas gets stopped. Boom, game over. But Taylor Green, 416 yards passing. Jaquindon Jackson was running wild in this game. 232 yards on the ground and 416 in the air. You don't see 600-yard offensive games a lot when power four teams go at it, but that's what you had in Stillwater earlier today. And Oklahoma State, look, it's a gutty, gritsy win. Alan Bowman, admittedly better than I've given him credit for. They couldn't run the ball. Arkansas outran Oklahoma State 232 to 59 and lost the football game. I don't know the last time I've seen anything like that. Everything about this game said that Arkansas should have won. Death, taxes, Mike Gundy. They found a way. They just, they found a way. You're not going to be able to find a way against the best teams in the Big 12 the way you did in this game. That is not a sustainable formula for Oklahoma State. Ollie Gordon kept completely in check, 17 carries, 49 yards. Shout out Woo Pig Suey to the defensive line. Unfortunate for the Hogs that they walk away with a loss. But I still think, I said going into this game, that if Arkansas finds a way to win, you might look at a lot of games on Arkansas' schedule differently. I think you have to look at them at least in slightly different fashion. They play UAB next week. They'll win. At Auburn, host Texas A&M, host Tennessee, host LSU. Does it seem if they revitalize the offense and and they get another tune-up game next week against UAB? Shout out to Trent Dilfer, their head coach. If if does, does it seem out of the realm of possibility that Arkansas could win one of those four games and throw a wrench into somebody's plans? to make the SEC championship game or have a bounce back year. Auburn's at Jordan Hare, but you have three straight games at home. LSU is at home off a bye. I'm just saying, I'm just saying the back half of their schedule gets pretty tough. They've uh, got Ole Miss, that's at home. Texas, that's at home. And they have to go at Missouri. It's going to be quite the home slate. If this is Sam Pittman's final go round, he's going to go down swinging because there are a lot of opportunities to notch major wins for the Arkansas head coach. But I got to tell you, you look at what Arkansas was a year ago. Bobby Petrino, he's making an impact. He's making an impact. This is an indictment on Jimbo Fisher, by the way, because he was the offensive coordinator at Texas A&M last year, and it was still bad. Well, here he goes to Arkansas, and in two games, he has put up 30, 70 and 31 points. And in the 31-point game, he put up 648 yards of offense. He might know what he's doing. He, he might have an idea of what he's doing coordinating an offense for the Razorbacks. So, uh, gutsy win for Oklahoma State, a big win to keep their slim at large college football playoff berth hopes alive. But I come away looking at Arkansas a little bit differently. Auburn better watch out in a couple of weeks because clearly this is an Arkansas team that can score some points at the very least. What a game it was.